It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to this Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, September 1st, 2011. I am James Burns, your host, and today we are honored to be joined by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Bob, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. Is this the very famous James Burns? I don't know uh, if uh, famous counts, but uh, maybe infamous uh, sooner or later. (laughs) How have you been? Uh, Just perfect. I'm overwhelmed, of course. Uh, Everybody and his brother wants to be on my show. (laughs) And uh, I don't know how I keep up with it. Well, Bob, you you are... Well, I think what it comes down to, Bob, is that you're a very popular guy, plus uh, your information is 99% of the time spot on, and uh, you've been doing the trends, you know, international forecaster for so long now, and following the trends going on in the world, and that's why you're so popular. Well, I'm I'm just here to help people, and uh, I've done plenty of that, and I want to do plenty more. And so that's what it's all about for me. It has nothing to do with money fame, success, because they've had a lot already. Yeah, I agree. Uh, It's interesting. I I came across a quote by Jim Carrey when it comes to fame and money. He said that he wished that everybody would would become rich and famous so that they would one day realize that that's not what's important. And I think that's true. He's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. It's your relationship with mankind, uh, no matter how you approach it. Most definitely. It's also about finding a purpose as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about, of course, is the um, what happened uh, what a couple days ago, the uh, fall of Tripoli, uh, thanks to uh, the coalition between al-Qaeda and uh, NATO forces. Uh, that ties into a much bigger scope, of course, uh, the Libya fallout along with uh, more coming uh, turmoil, revolutions, whether they're uh, legitimate or not, uh, re- wars, and, of course, a potential attack on Syria and Iran. Uh, what is your take on all this, Bob? It's long and convoluted. Uh, first of all, Gaddafi uh, was bumped out of power because he wanted to institute a golden dinar, and uh, he would not join AFRICOM. And, of course, the uh, Illuminous neocons, uh, the New American Century, which is that's part of their plan, they went ballistic. And, like, you know, we kept you alive and allowed you to be dictator, uh, for all those years, and uh, you don't do what we, we, we tell you to do, so we're going to destroy you. And it's very common. I've talked to former heads of states, and they've told me personally, the, the U.S. tells them, if you don't do this, we'll destroy you. I mean, if it's not commercially, financially, in the use of telecommunications or air service or whatever it is, if that doesn't work, we'll come and kill you all. I mean, this is the, the vernacular that they're using with people. Now, with that said, they wanted to steal everything they could get their hands on and set up a geopolitical power post like they have in Iraq, which now has the biggest embassy in the world, the U.S. embassy, and Afghanistan. No. Uh, why did they want to do that? Well, for the reasons I told you, plus the following. They want to steal the four water aquifers. Uh, They want to steal the second largest inventory of oil in the Middle East, probably the finest oil in the world. And they kicked the Chinese out, told them to get out of here. And uh, they've taken over all their claims. The Chinese had 32,000 people working in there. They left a crew of one to 2,000 to take care of things. <clears throat> and uh, they just told them, get out. Uh, they had $100 billion, 60% of it in Europe and 40% of it in the U.S., in a sovereign account for investment. And uh, they're talking about releasing it. They froze it. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of money missing. And uh, they're talking in terms of $5 billion. I can, I can promise you, uh, you've got to add some zeros. I mean, these people are criminals. Um, 
they have uh, 143.8 tons of gold or something on that order. They want to steal that too. And of course, Gaddafi was forced with his family to flee to Algeria. And uh, now they want to go after him there. And uh, it's, it's really dreadful what they've done. The people who are running America from behind the scenes, and our politicians and other criminals, uh, America has lost its way in a big way permanently. And in America, it will end up in revolution. There's absolutely no question. And they know it. And they think they're going to win. And I get news for them. They're not. Syria. They have a large Russian naval base. They have to decide whether it's time to tell Russia to move out and will Russia move out? I don't know. It could be the beginning of a third world war. Uh, we can't tell yet. I don't think Russia will move out. And so it's going to get very, very nasty. And Russia doesn't want war, but they're going to get it. And then if they get it, the Chinese will get into it. And um, most of the large cities in America will get nuked. Millions of people will die. But, you know, if you, you get the kind of government that you deserve, and nobody was paying attention all these years, and now they're going to get stuffed. And they deserve it. You know, I don't w wish anybody ill will or harm. But they were too dumb to understand. And this is where it's headed. I just hope it doesn't turn out that way, and I hope I'm wrong. But in 22 and a half years, I've only been wrong 2% of the time, maybe even 1%. So that's what's going on. They will go after Iran. When will they go? I don't know, but they will. Uh, Israel wants the Middle East for themselves. The Zionist movement is an aggressive criminal enterprise. And I'm sure that the Zionists who listen to this program are not going to be very happy about that. But uh, that's what the way I look at it. Well, I, I agree entirely, Bob. I mean, you see exactly what's been transpiring. I mean, over I, I would say over the last century alone with what the Zionists have been up to. I mean, they forced a whole bunch of people off their lands. And they brought in some other people. And, and most of the Israeli people, of course, are innocent. They have nothing to do with this. They're just pawns in the middle of all this. But you see what's about to happen in a couple of weeks. It looks like the U.N. is going to grant Palestine a statehood. And uh, the Zionists and Israel aren't going to be too happy about that. So I definitely agree with you, Bob. Of all this stuff going on with uh, Libya, Syria, Iran, I, I seriously believe we're on the verge of World War III. Well, it's going to happen sooner or later, I believe. Again... I wish it wouldn't. You know, I have family in the United States, friends, but they're going to get obliterated. And, of course, the other countries will as well. But these nutcases in the Illuminati who run everything from behind the scenes, the banking and the financial fraternity, transnational corporations, etc., uh, they... They're sociopaths, but most of them are as well psychopaths. And I've talked to a number of them. And they don't know who I am when I talk to them, just another person. And they don't know what I'm listening for. And that includes heads of state that I've had close contact with in the past. And so... You know, you size the thing up and you try to figure out where, where it's going. You try to back into the answers. And um, I hope I'm right on the other hand. I hope I'm not. It's a very difficult position to be in. But I'm here to warn people that the possibilities exist. And you better do something really fast or... If you miss the nuclear blast, you may end up in an internment camp. You know, if you read the literature 
of the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission and the Bilderberger Group, you'll find that they're very open about telling everybody that 60 to 90 percent, depending upon who you're reading or listening to, of the people on the earth should be liquidated. Well, they, they actually espouse that. At one time, I had the, the, probably one of the largest eugenics libraries in the world. And I'm the only one that ever wanted to read them, so I gave them all away to the University of Southern California and UCLA for their research departments. Some of those books were printed in the early 1800s, and they were in excellent condition. And that's part of, you know, the termination of life, the useless eaters. We only let the bright live, and then we have a coitery to do all the dirt work, and that's it. And there's, there's, there's a long story behind that about who's going to live, who's going to breed, where you're going to live, who you can marry. Maybe there will be no marriages, just sessions where people get impregnated, and on and on and on. These people are nutcases. I, I I couldn't disagree with that one, Bob. I think they have serious uh, psychological and mental issues. I mean, for one thing, they see the rest of us as bugs. And this next question is actually an email question. It kind of ties into what you've been talking about, the Illuminati, the New World Order, their plans. It comes from uh, Lorne. He wants to know, in your opinion, who or what is at the top of the New World Order pyramid and where does all the other groups fall into place? Well... The leaders of the pack are the royal families of Europe. Uh, their heritage goes all the way back, as far as I can cons- to discern, into ancient Egypt. And we know more of their activities in the last thousand years. Uh, they've been pulling the same uh, shenanigans uh, century after century. And they're forever trying for complete control and in that process sometimes they lose their heads or or get hung or whatever and sometimes they're exiled historically uh, so the royal families of Europe and the bankers of Europe are the backbone of the Illuminati now there are Illuminists all over the world particularly in the United States and Canada um, tends to be more European than anything else in, in historical perspective. And, of course, in America you have the icon David Rockefeller, and uh, before that his brother with him, Nelson, who died in the sex orgy. And uh, then over in Europe you have not only these, uh, those heads of families, but you also have the Rothschilds and the people who cooperate with them. And so there's so many books on the subject today. I mean, if you had asked me 50 years ago, I could have given you five or six books. Today there's hundreds. So just go to Google or um, Amazon and look under conspiracy. And there's all kinds of books, like The Creature from Jekyll Island, Gold Warriors, um, The Secrets of the Federal Reserve. Uh, many of these books are written by people who I know. Uh, unfortunately, Eustace Mullins died about a year ago, and Ed uh, Griffin's been a friend of mine for, well, since 1964, and on and on and on. But that's the way you go after it. And it's quite a study, it goes back for centuries. And you're going to find, you're going to say to yourself, my goodness gracious, this is far, far worse than I ever imagined. I mean, it's amazing how far they've come. I mean, they, they've been playing this game for a very, very long time, Bob. I mean, generations and generations of it, the indoctrination that, that the elite uh, go into, I mean, stuff that obviously I, I have no real idea about because I'm not there, but... I mean, they, they've been playing for a very long time, you know, slowly moving the chess pieces in play. And 
How, how do the corporations uh, tie into this entire uh, New World Order agenda? Where, where do they fit? The major players, both of which you see and that you don't see, that are behind the science, of, uh, behind the facade, uh, who you, ne- you never l- learn who they are. I mean, look at the pharmaceutical industry, wonderful example. The foundations, these uh, not-for-profit foundations, uh, the Rockefeller Foundation, and, and on and on and on, uh, which are controlled by these people. They own the majority shareholdings of all the pharmaceutical companies and the transnational corporations besides the pharmaceutical companies, IBM, et cetera, et cetera. They own them all. They're fabulously wealthy, I mean, in the trillions. And they have wars periodically when things get too hot, like we just talked about. And uh, it's great for them. They make a lot more money, get rid of a lot of people, steal more, and have more power. And they send us poor schlumps out to fight all these wars. I've been there. I've done that. And so I learned very quickly in counterintelligence where the government invited me to stay for a few years. I learned exactly what they were up to and changed my whole life. And now here, 53 years later, I'm telling people what these people have been doing. Of course, during the interim years, very few people listen. But with the advent of the Internet, things changed dramatically. And then we had talk radio in a big way. It's all over the world. I had maybe 15 emails from different countries this morning. Thailand, Ukraine, Germany. The, 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 The list is endless. And because of the dissemination of the truth, what's happened is the bad guys are losing, and I like it. I like it too, Bob. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Moving on to the economy, both in the U.S. and uh, Europe, uh, I, I came across an article yesterday, Bob, talking about how the stocks uh, logged uh, the worst August in the past 10 years. The dollar, of course, continues to lose value. Surprise, surprise. Along with the housing market, unemployment and food, gas, and metal prices are all on the rise. Um, a lot of people are, are speculating back and forth, oh, the, the Great Recession has returned, or, or this isn't a recession, this is just a hiccup. Uh, in your opinion, Bob, what is the situation we're in? Well, it's... Um the facts are in the international forecaster, and if you go back in the issues, you find out uh, two and a half years ago uh, in February of '09, I said that a inflationary depression had begun, and it won't be recognized until we go over 14 and 5 eighths percent inflation. And if that doesn't happen this year, this is real inflation the formula you used in 1980, uh, it'll happen early next year. But I think it'll happen this year because real inflation presently is 11.211% according to John Williams, who's the leader of the pack in that. He, he's great. He's a great economist. And, uh, of course, the government would wish he'd uh, expire but um, uh, that's not going to happen that easily unless they arrange it. Uh, anyway, that's where it is. That's where it's going. And uh, next year, uh, QE2 and Stimulus 2 will hit the pipeline, and we'll have 25 or 30%. And if we have QE3, which we must, uh, you could be looking at 50% in two and a half to three years. See, for every action, there's a reaction. Uh, A good example. Um, The banks have been lending for three years to AAA borrowers, most of them Illuminous. And, and of course, the Illuminous are on the banks. And the Federal Reserve lent money to banks 
some of which own the Federal Reserve. They created money out of thin air, digits. It went from one computer, computer to another. And they charged them 0% interest. Then the banks all lent the money back to the Fed at 2.5%. Holding those funds in abeyance so they could be used at the most propitious time. And so last week I saw that about $8 billion, I think that's the figure, was transferred from the Fed to these banks. Now I've got to look and see if this continues. Is it a trend, a strong trend? If it is, the money which has not been available to small and medium-sized corporations, might be. Now, they reduce lending to those kinds of corporations <clears throat> by 30% over the last three years. And so, if they get, say, $100 billion or $200 billion from the Fed and the banks lend it, that means that unemployment would probably not go higher. It would probably remain stagnant as long as they were lending because the small and medium-sized companies create 70% of the jobs. Uh, and that's good for the economy. But, ah, for every action there's a reaction. The flip side is once they start lending the money, it's called monetization, and it, incre it creates inflation. And it, it creates inflation almost immediately. And so if they are going to use that to give the economy a boost, and not talk about QE3, but that's what they're doing anyway, then we're going to get some real horrendous inflation, but there's no other way they can do it other than printing money and credit and using it. It's the same old song and dance, isn't it, Bob? It certainly is. And um, these people know what they're doing. I know what they're doing. Very few people understand it. And you have to look at it in, an, at, in a historical perspective. Because you cannot get privy to what they're doing. They're not going to tell you, whether it's in government, Wall Street banking, anywhere. So you've got to see what they've done in the past, and then you have to back into it. I've been pretty lucky. I backed into it pretty good and got all of these predictions, and they've all been right. That's great. But that's how I did it. And... I've really helped a lot of people avoid the pitfalls that you see out there. And those pitfalls are going to get worse and worse and worse. Because in the final analysis, they want to bring the system down without injuring themselves. And that system, once it hits somewhere near bottom, is going to force people particularly in the United States, Western Europe, and England, to accept world government. And that's what they're up to. That's what this is all about. And I'm afraid they're not going to make it. Because more people every single day are finding out worldwide who's doing what to them and why. And They can't stand that. In fact, Mr. Brzezinski uh, has made uh, three speeches in the last three years at the Council on Foreign Relations and, and uh, told them, you know, these people are closing in on you. You better make your moves fast or we're in serious trouble. So we're having a major impact with these programs as well as uh, the publications, which unfortunately there's not enough of them, 
And there's not enough people who are really qualified, who have really done all the homework necessary to talk intelligently about what what we're discussing today. And um, I'm not happy about that. I like 50,000 helpers or even 1,000 because I'm 76 and uh, I can't live forever. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what's really sad, Bob, about the mainstream media, these, these so-called journalists. They, they don't talk about the real important issues. They talk about what they're told to talk about. Mostly now it's becoming more about uh, entertainment and uh, tabloid uh, BS. They, they talk about these reality shows, uh, the, the NFL lockout, a potential NBA lockout, uh, issues that really don't matter uh, compared to what's really going on in the world. Well, as you said, it's entertainment, and uh, people are not interested. I covered that earlier in the program. Uh, you know, somebody's going to starve to death. Somebody's going to die, you know, according to these people. And obviously, you've chosen yourselves to do that. So if you want to get dead, keep right on doing what you're doing. And your, you know, grandchildren and children and on and on. People don't get it. It's not only in America, it's all over the world. And that's what I'm trying to wake up. Hopefully enough of them will listen so that they will change their governments. And most of them will have to overthrow them, unfortunately. I I fear that that's the direction we're going, Bob. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And... I mean, so many things are going wrong. We're continuing to uh, see not only the – we're going to talk about Europe in a minute, but we'll stick with the U.S. right now. Uh, we, we see uh, with the dollar de- devaluing, with unemployment continuing to go up, more people losing their homes, being kicked out onto the streets. And now you have uh, <laughs> the, the, um, the president and Congress both talking about jobs. They're, they're big plans for jobs. And they've even been discussing the idea of uh, next week having a speech about it. Uh, next to uh, Obama pulling an FDR, I really don't see how they're going to ma- magically make these jobs happen. Well, of course they are not. This is for public consumption. This is for the useless eaters, the meatheads out there, uh, the ones that sit around and watch these sitcoms and, and all of the other stupidities that they watch. Uh, I would just thinking um, I know Charlie Sheen from when he was a kid and I was flashing through the TV last night and I saw him on that program he's on and it was funny I watched it for three or four minutes but um, this is the kind of things that people do to escape from the vicissitudes of life there's nothing wrong with it it's just that there's better things to do of course, Charlie's be, become very wealthy. Incidentally, uh, when he was a kid, he was a great baseball player. And I think you're right about that, Bob. I think, I think there's a, it's okay to have a little bit of distraction in our lives, but the problem is so many of these sheeple and the uh, zombies and jellyfish out there, they, they make sports, they make TV shows, they make reality shows their top priority while everything else is going to hell. That's true. That's what Hollywood's all about. And, you know, they, when government asks for propaganda, they get it from them. I mean, look what went on during the Second World War. You know, I lived through that period. And uh, even I, as a kid, could see what they were up to. And, of course, we saw lots of people go away and never come back. And that happened to a number of countries, not just America. And uh, I always find it lugubrious when I see a group of Germans having a religious service before they go off to war and on their belt buckle it says, God is with us. And I see the same thing with the American army or whatever service doing the same thing. I didn't know God was on both sides. (laughs) <laughs> this is how ludicrous it is. 
There's no winners. And people die, and there's no reason for it. Almost all the wars in the last thousand years have been financed and promulgated on both sides by the same group of people. We're suckers. I learned it early. I was in my 20s, and I learned it very quickly. And I, had, I was so exposed to it because it was part of my training to spy on the Russians. And now, today, people still don't understand. People? Well, half the population of every country really doesn't know what's going on at any time about anything. And then the other half got a shot at it. And most of them don't want to be bothered. I mean, as long as they're not bothered, they don't hear, care what the government is or who the dictator is. Think about it. And so that's why we have the problems we've got. And somebody's got to come along and say, hey, look, you know, the emperor's over there and he's naked. He will say, no, he's got clothes on. Oh, I think you better take a closer look. And that's what life's all about, understanding life. The word is history. His story. The story of man and how dumb he can be. Now, unfortunately, Bob, we've seen that repeated over and over again throughout history. I mean, so many people have gone off and fought in the name of God. I mean, take what happened back in the Crusades. I mean, those, those men were used by the Catholic Church and their kings and rulers to go off to the Middle East for, for what? For, for nothing, just for death and destruction. Well, they had no Internet. They had no movies. They had no radio. They were bored. They wanted some action. And, you know, you, you forget the best part of it. The Crusaders took over the financial system of Europe. It was stolen from eventually by the Vatican and others. Thank you. And, uh, but that was their reward. Yeah. And that's. They thought it was okay because within the system at the time, that was the thing to do and it was accepted. But after they uh, formed their power base, and took over finances, everybody else said it was in the top tier. Hey, we can't have these uh, professional killers running around running all the money, and so we got to do something about that. Yeah, and they went away as well. And uh, going back into the economy, going into Europe, speaking of Europe, um, it looks like uh, we, something we've talked about a lot on the show is that the Eurozone's in serious trouble, and uh, I came across... Uh, an article last night actually talking about how Chancellor Merkel is backing this uh, Euro fund boost of uh, over 440 million euros. But at the same time, as you've pointed out on several occasions, she's facing serious opposition from her own government. Is the European Union heading towards a banking crisis? Well, on the 7th, we're going to find out what the Supreme Court said. Now, the Supreme Court in Karlsruhe, which is non-political, has to decide whether lending money or buying bonds from other Eurozone countries is within the venue of the treaty that Germany has with the Eurozone and the European Central Bank. If they say it's illegal, then they can't do that. Now, on the other hand, trying to get ahead of the curve next Wednesday, and let's see, um, when do those dates hit? Uh, let me get my calendar out here. Next Wednesday is the 7th, and they want to vote on that day, and that's the day that the court is supposed to say whether it's legal under the treaty to do that. And Mrs. Merkel has had 25 members of the CDU contingent uh, in the Munich area. Uh, they have another name. It's the, um, 
Christian Democratic something or other. But the, the parties are very uh, similar, and they usually act together. Uh, so you get 25 of them to say, no, we're not going to do that, because the German people are screaming murder. They don't want to put any more money in. Uh, we've had it. And, of course, that doesn't mean that it will happen. And just because the public wants it to happen, that they don't lend money. So it's going to be a big day. And if the court says no, then they're going to have to try to pass legislation that will allow Germany, which is a kingpin, like 45% of the economic and financial action in the European Union comes from them. And so they're number one. And they then have to have a vote, which I don't think they can pass it. But maybe they can. We'll see. But if they do pass it, they're on the hook. Not just Germany, but the other solvent countries. For somewhere between four and six trillion dollars. Now the sad part about this is I told people in the German government this a year and a half ago. And they said, no, no, the, the numbers are trillion. And I said, you better go back to the drawing board, all you pointy-headed professors. And now they're talking in terms of $3.5 trillion. It is unpayable. It will bankrupt every country in Europe. It is mass stupidity. But why are they doing it? Because they, the bureaucrats, the politicians, the bankers, and the Illuminati, they want world government. And that's more important than the solvency of those European nations. And this is the facts that you're never going to read from any major media. Even the newsletter writers, they don't have a clue. They don't know anything about history. They never lived in foreign countries and speak several languages. They haven't done the time and grade, as we used to say in the military. And, uh, and so, no matter what they do, it's going to be awful. And it's just that if they supply the money, it'll take longer. Uh, they probably won't collapse for four or five years. Maybe three. But they will collapse. There's no way out. Yeah, I, I think that the EU's days are seriously numbered. Bob Chapman is my guest, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And a couple weeks ago, Bob, I came across this article considering, uh, concerning Switzerland, how they may have to be giving up their uh, currency and possibly even join the European Union. How disastrous would this be for the people of Switzerland? It, it, it couldn't be anything worse from a social, political economic and financial aspect. I lived in Switzerland for three years. I speak both French and German. In fact, I went to the University de Genève and took the interpreter's course, which is eight years of French. I took it in two years. I'm a lucky guy. And I lived there a long time. I lived in Germany four years. I get a letter this morning from a Dane who is living in Thailand, and I lived in Copenhagen for a year. <laughs> and it goes on and on and on. Uh, sort of like the world traveler. But the government helped me along that path. And, uh, and it was great. It was great. I, uh, I learned an awful lot. And they really should have never trained me, but they didn't know that. Anyway, um, the European situation is tied directly to England and the United States and to a minor extent to Canada. And we're all going to suffer, no matter what they do. It's going down. And that's why I keep on telling people, please, if you've got any wealth, invest it in gold and silver coins, bullion and shares. It's the only thing that's going to protect you. And if you don't have any wealth, that's okay. What you do is buy dehydrated and freeze-dried foods, can't do that, buy extra canned goods and rotate them, have a water filter, and make sure you can defend your family. Because we don't know which way this is going to go. And you don't want to get dead because you don't have any food 
or if somebody come, decides to come to your house and take everything that you have that they want, and they've got weapons, I mean, it's better to die on your feet than on your knees. And so I tell people to get prepared because I think it's going to get bad. And uh, unfortunately, I've been right. And that's not good for you. Now, that, that's what's really sad about this whole situation. I mean, anyone that uh, has even a remote you know, eye open to this, um, what's happening across the world, all these events and how they tie in together, uh, they, they, they have to see the writing on the wall that, that things are about to get really, really bad, not just in the U.S. and not just in Europe, but throughout the rest of the world as well. And uh, sticking with the European Union, I mean, I just don't understand why Switzerland would even consider joining the EU, especially with all the problems they've been having in Greece and France and Spain and Portugal and all these other countries. And now uh, you look at the situation happening in Italy. I just came across this story, Bob, from um, uh, apparently uh, uh, Berlusconi uh, was caught um, saying something very, very uh, bad about his uh, country, Italy how um, he is uh, vowing to leave uh, Italy, which he is describing as a quote-unquote shitty country. Uh, that's not exactly something you want from your leader to say about the country they're supposed to be the leader of. Well, first of all, uh, he's a member of the Illuminati. He's a made man. Uh, secondly, he's extraordinarily wealthy. Uh, and uh, similarly, can go anywhere in the world. Uh, his personal life is like a garbage pit. Uh, it reminds me of Rick Perry's. <laughs> and that'll, that'll all come out in time as well. And, uh, uh, you know, who really wants him? The world doesn't need people like him. On the other hand, it doesn't need the people who are the communists who are always running against him. They're just as bad. So, uh, you know, th there's a good side and a bad side. And... The communists lost power about five years, six years ago, and they had one, two, or three-year period that they were in power, and they just ransacked the government. I mean, they stole everything that wasn't nailed down. And uh, uh, Italy is a very difficult country to govern, very difficult, uh, you know, among European countries say, advanced countries. And, you know, that's why we had so many people migrate from Italy during the, the period from about 1875 in, until, you know, perhaps 30 or 40 years ago. I think it's a sick and tired of all the corruption, etc., and they left. I mean, other people leave other countries uh, for other reasons. During the same time frame, a lot of Irish left Ireland. Well, they started earlier because it was a potato famine, which the British arranged for them to reduce their population. British are real nice people. Yeah, well, the, uh, to paraphrase the British elite, the royals... And their uh, hierarchy, not the, uh, not those uh, average person. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's just sad, Bob. You see the same thing happening in every single country. You know, one scumbag after the other running the show. And you just mentioned Rick Perry with the uh, 2012 presidential election coming up, and it, it looks like he's he's it's either going to be him or Romney that's probably going to be the GOP establishment pick to go up against Obama. The truth is, all three of them are basically one and the same. No, all three of them are contra controlled by the same group of people. That is Only this time, if Ron Paul is not elected, I can prom I promise you that the economy and the finances are going to deteriorate extremely quickly. And it will end up in demonstrations, rioting, and probably revolution. Well, I, I definitely see that coming this way, Bob. It's sad with what's been happening the past couple of years in this country. I mean, the approval rating not only for the president, but for the Congress, for both parties, and for the government itself is at all-time lows. The American people are 
sick and tired of this BS coming from Washington, the den of crooks, and they want real change. They're tired of this more of the same nonsense. You're right, but they got to do something about it, and they're not willing to. But they will once they have no food or they're offered uh, sanctuary in, in a uh, internment camp, better known as a concentration camp. And that's what's going to happen to them. And there's not much you can do about it. I mean, we do what we c can, but if they're not going to listen, they're not going to listen. No, nah, that's unfortunate. I mean, especially with all the evidence that's out there that we've that you've been you know bringing up out into the light for the past several decades now. That so many others have as well. Uh, it's sad, but it's true. These people are just they're they're like ostriches with their heads in the sand, and. We look at this police state here in the United States. It's how it's on the march. I mean, over the past year alone, you know, people are being arrested for growing gardens in their front yards, for filming police officers, for feeding the homeless, for uh, selling raw milk, and uh, even kids' lemonade stands aren't safe from uh, the authorities. I mean, and uh, a couple days ago, the, the Gibson Guitars, one of the few companies we have left in the U.S., I'm a big music guy. I came from rock radio, and uh, they were raided by the feds over wood, and... With all this police brutality on the rise, Bob, I mean, how much more of this crap are the American people going to take before it gets ugly? Well, I think they, they'll probably take a fair amount more. It'll last for another two or three years. And, you know, we're looking at three and a half million homes uh, foreclosed uh, in inventory right now. Uh, we're going to end up uh, within the next four or five years with something in the vicinity of eight to 11 million homes. And there's going to be a lot of people who are living with a lot of other people in the same rooms. And it's going to be very, very difficult. And even if money is used to lend to small and medium-sized companies, they can't generate enough to knock down unemployment. I mean, they might be able to hold it for a while. But when you ship your manufacturing capabilities, which are about 11% in America today, down from 30% just in 1980, that's not that long ago. When you ship all those jobs and businesses out of the country, I mean, how do you expect that people are going to get employed? And even if they are, what are they going to get paid? I mean, the $30 job is gone. It's over in China or wherever it's gone. And here you're lucky if you can get 12 bucks an hour. People have used up the equity in their homes. Home prices have fallen. They don't have much equity left. Credit cards are, their usage is down overall, but they're still widely used. The bankruptcy is rampant. Uh, it's not good. No, it's not, Bob. It's sad because so many people, I've, I've seen so many homes for sale right now. So many people are, are having yard sales. And, and these people are not having yard sales simply because they have some extra stuff they want to get rid of. I mean, they're, they're literally selling everything they have left just to survive. You're right. And the price of everything goes higher. And that just makes it more binding. We haven't had any gains in, gains in wages. I mean, year to year, you might see a half a percent or one percent. And if you deduct, well, let's take this year. Let's say we get 14 percent inflation like I'm, uh, I'm projecting. And wages go up one percent. I mean, does it really help that much? No, I don't think so. No, no, it doesn't, Bob. It most definitely does not. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. A few minutes left with Bob. Uh, currently, uh, gold price is down uh, $4.10, $1,827.60, and silver is at $41.62. Uh, how soon do you think it's going to be, Bob? How much time do you have, think that's left before gold and silver and the other precious metals uh, begin to skyrocket? 
So in two to four weeks, probably two, uh, gold will test 1900 and silver will test $50. And between now and the end of February, I expect gold to be 3000 to $3,200 and silver to be anywhere between 70 and and $100 an ounce. And even if they don't get there by then, they're going to get there. And anybody who thinks that they're not is mistaken. Uh, I recommended in June of 2000 to my subscribers that they get into gold and silver related assets. And some of them made fortunes. Absolute fortunes. And the game isn't even over yet. And that's less than 1% of the population that own gold and silver related assets. At the end of the boom in gold in 1980, when gold hit 850, 15% of the people own gold and silver related assets. So we got a long way to go here. And people in Europe and India and Russia and China and all over the world, they're buying gold and silver, bullion, coins and shares. We get governments buying bullion. Our neighbors in Mexico, 100 tons. That's $5.4 billion. So you're going to continue to see a move in that direction. And sooner or later, the stock market's going to come down. The timing is very difficult. For years, I've been able to pick the tops and bottoms with impunity. Not this time. It's too hard. I'm just saying it's going to go down. I don't know when, but it's going. And bonds are at a 34-year high. Do people really think that the price of bonds can levitate forever? I don't think so. So, to me, it cuts off those two avenues of investment. So you get commodities, and you get gold and silver. And that's it. You're right, Bob. It's not a question of when, if the uh, stock market falls, it's a question of when. And I, I believe sincerely that it's coming, that anybody that's still investing in empty, meaningless pieces of paper are, are being duped and are fooling themselves. You're right. And, um, you know, I, I had a portfolio come in from a company today uh, from investors. And I know the company quite well. And if I named the name, you, you'd know it as well. And when the market went down two and a half years ago, the clients of that company lost 40 to 65% of their money. In the interim, the markets have come back. But if the Dow goes down again, their investments are going to go down with it. I don't think that's a very good place to be. Not exactly, Bob. It's basically a sinking ship. we got about a minute left, Bob. Uh, how can people get the International Forecaster? Well, the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. Published by email on Wednesdays and Saturdays, runs around 40 pages each time. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month for those who are not on the Internet. And everything that you need to know each week is in that publication. Get a free copy by going to theinternationalforecaster.com, theinternationalforecaster.com. You can also go to www.intforecaster.com. C-A-S-T-E-R.com, intforecaster.com. If you would like to ask a question, and we answer everyone, if you'd like a copy of either, or if you'd like a copy of our latest recommendation in gold and silver shares, email us that address, Bob, B-O-B, at intforecaster.com. Bob at I-N-T-F-O-R-E-C-A-S-T-E-R dot com. And for those of you who would like to call toll-free, 
877-479-8178. Get your free copies. And if you want to become a subscriber, they have an offer there for a free one-year subscription. Take advantage of it. It's a terrific offer. It absolutely is. Bob, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I will talk to you next week, sir. I will. Bye-bye.